Introduction to Coasts, part of the Edexcel GCSE 91 Geography course. So the keywords and the stuff that we're going to be looking at here are constructive wave, destructive waves, fetch, swash, backwash, longshore drift, concordant coastline, discordant coastlines, bay, cove, beaches, deposition, cliffs and erosion. Waves. Waves are one of the most powerful influences on the shape of the UK's coastline. Winds are co uh, waves are caused by wind blowing over the surface of the sea. So what can affect a wave's strength? How long the wind has been blowing, strength of the wind, and the distance the wave has been travelling. So this is called the fetch. When a wave goes up the beach, it's called swash. When it goes back down the beach, it's called backwash. Destructive waves. Destructive waves are usually uh, made in storm-like conditions. Destructive waves are usually larger and more powerful with lots of energy. They're created when the wind is powerful and has been blowing for a long time and the wave has a long fetch. These are what erodes the coastline as they have a stronger backwash than a swash as they take away the sediment. They have a high and steep shape with a short length. So as you see here, high steep shape okay but a short length okay so it's a large height compared to the length okay and it's got a strong backwash pulling what they've um, eroded away back out to sea constructive waves are created in milder weather and they have less energy than the destructive waves they break on the shore depositing their load as you move higher up the beach the rocks and sediment will be higher uh, be larger they have a swash, uh, this is because there's a, they have a stronger swash, okay? So they're gonna have less power, uh, uh, so the, they're gonna have stronger swash that's so gonna be able to bring the sediment up the beach, and it's not gonna be able to pull it back, okay? So they have a stronger swash than backwash, and they have a short shape, but a long length. So you can see here, long length, but short height, okay? And it's very smooth, it's almost flat. Okay, longshore drift. Okay, so the direction of longshore drift is on here. So they could ask you to draw this diagram in the exam. Okay, so you've got to make sure you annotate it well. Shore and sea. I usually use a solid arrow for the swash, the dotted arrow for the backwash. Okay, so the swash comes up the beach at an angle, and then the backwash comes straight back out. Swash and backwash. Okay, you've got the direction of prevailing wind, okay, which is the same direction as the swash is occurring okay and you, the direction of longshore wind so this is how sediment's going to travel along the beach it's going to get pushed that way and it's going to pull out so sediment's going to move along the beach like so okay it's going to move along the shoreline you've got to make sure that you draw it going over the um, shoreline usually on the mark scheme it doesn't allow you the mark if you've just drawn it in the sea or you've just drawn it in the shore Got to make sure you have all of these different elements to make sure you get the full marks. Usually they're quite easy questions, but people forget to view it over the shoreline, to forget the direction of the wind, to get the direction of longshore drift. Coves and concordant coastlines. Okay, so a concordant coastline occurs with layers of different types of rocks run parallel to the coastline. You can see that here, it's running parallel to the coastline, you've got layers of different types of rock. Okay, the harder rock nearest the coast acts as a protective barrier to the softer rock, which is further inland. Okay, so you've got the hard rock, the softer rock, and then the hard rock again. So it acts as a barrier to stop the less resistant rock from being eroded. Okay, and coves form along a concordant coastline. Okay, so that's what's called, uh, formed along here. And they're formed when the hard rock layer is breached, creating a small joint, which you can see here. Then this joint becomes larger and larger as it's targeted by erosion and hydraulic action. Okay, and threes for weathering even. Okay, over time this joint's made large enough to breach the softer rock, which is here, the less resistant rock. Okay, and it's eroded a much easier through um, hydraulic action, abrasion and solution. Okay, and then this all erodes all the way back. So the hard rock leading uh, and then so it's going to erode all the way back here as you can see here so it's just eroding even more 
okay, all the way back to this more resistant rock where it doesn't have the energy to erode this here. So it's eroding sideways. And this is what a cove is, okay? So it's creating a cove. So a named example is Rollworth Cove in Dorset. Headlands, bays, and discordant coastlines. Okay, so discordant coastline is where bands of different types of rock are uh, perpendicular to the coast. Okay, so rather than it being next to the coast like that, like it is on a concordant coastline, it's running next to it like that. That's what a discordant coastline is. So this arrangement of rock is where headlands and bays can come from. Headlands are formed as the harder rock is eroded less. Okay, so this is harder, so it's not going to be eroded as easily. So the erosion is going to uh, tackle the softer rock more. Okay, so the bays are formed when the uh, softer rock is uh, eroded through rapid hydraulic action solution and abrasion and erosion uh, erodes it further back than the harder rock. Okay. Headlands are formed, so the harder rock is eroded less, so it's left sticking out. Okay, so the softer rock's going to be eroded further, you're going to have the harder rock left sticking out, as you can see here. So you've got the bay here, okay, so the soft rock's being eroded away, and it's going to be eroded much further back than the harder rock, which has barely been touched, and that's left as a headland here. Okay, the headland is more vulnerable to erosion now. So as the wave's energy is concentrated here, okay? So this now is gonna be eroded faster now, but what if this goes back here, it's gonna form another bay, it's the softer rock's gonna be eroded. Okay. Formation of a cliff. Cliffs are found all along the British coastline. They're formed through erosion and weathering. Soft rock is eroded easily, and this creates gentle sloping cliffs. OK, so it's going to be, uh, go down gently. Harder rock is more resistant and erodes slowly to create steep cliffs. That's what's happened here. This is obviously hard rock as the cliff is very steep. Formation of a beach. Beaches are depositional landforms. There are many different types of beaches, but the main types are sand, pebble, shingle and mud. Beaches are made of eroded material that's transported and then deposited by the sea by uh, constructive waves. Okay, constructive waves are what build up the beach. Okay, and the cross section of the beach is called the profile. Sandy beaches have a gentle sloping profile, whereas shingle and pebble beaches have a steeper profile. Further up the beach, the sediment is larger whereas further down the beach, the sediment is smaller. OK, and you've got to remember that the transportation of this sediment is longshore drift. So it's being taken by longshore drift, being left by the constructive waves. OK, and the, la and the sediment's larger at the top because the constructive waves don't have the energy to take it back, whereas they can take the smaller sediment back, but only so far. OK, 